Hey everyone, this is Jay and this is the GamePad Digital WinMax 2. Alright, so let's take a look at this before we open it up. Um, right here on the lid, it's made out of metal. Feels like aluminum. The bottom is made out of plastic. And on the front, you have your front-facing speakers, left and right, as well as the power button. On the back, you have your left and right bumpers, left and right triggers, uh, exhaust right here, heat exhaust, USB-C for charging, and Thunderbolt 4 for external GPU. Both of these can do, um, can charge and can use um, data and video out. You have your HDMI 2.0, USB 3.0, and your headphone jack. On the right side, another speaker, um, and then two USB 3.0 ports. Then on the left side, your left speaker. So we have a quad speaker going on here. And then micro SD, full size SD card, and then your reset button. And the back, your intake fan, 4G LTE uh, SIM card slot, a 2242 NVMe uh, M.2 SSD slot. And these two are programmable buttons, left and right, and then rubberized feet. All right, so this is what's in the box. You have your manual, QR code for instructions. And I like how they give you a tempered glass screen protector and there's your 100 watt USB-C charger on the back of the laptop you'll find two of these little panels tucked away and these are actually used to hide your joystick or your gamepad controls this is a touchpad Very nice tactile feedback on them. It's on the smaller side, um, but it works well enough. And then the keyboard, full size keys. You have all your keys except for a numpad on the side. Arrow keys are here, chiclet style. Um, and there's also this. There we go, we have backlit keys. You can actually increase it there's only two light uh, levels but as you can see it works well enough keeps all the keys lit up and function and shift will also turn your fan silent if this light is lit up or have it do an automatic full blast um, you can't turn off the fan but i'm not even sure if you can hear it I, I normally don't even hear it and what else everything here function keys you have all the keys that you'll need and yeah they all feel good tactile feedback the keys are very solid there's no flex on this and on to the next part all right, so here it is in all its glory. 10.1 inch screen, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, and the resolution, uh, it'll ship with 1920 by 1200, but natively, and as you're seeing it now, it is uh, 2560 by 1600. Um, I had to turn up the scaling to 200% just to make sure that everything isn't so tiny. And check out how vivid videos look on this as well as the sound all right as you can see the colors are very vivid it's it's bright it's it's vibrant it's a really good screen and it reminds me of the Samsung QLED screens. 
You know, it's not quite OLED, but it's very bright and super saturated. And the 16 to 10 aspect ratio, right now the video you're watching is 16 to 9, but the 16 to 10 really makes this pop, um, especially in games, as I'll show you in a little bit. All right, very quickly before I jump to the gamepad or the controller, um, typing on this or the, ex the typing experience on this can feel a little weird right from the get-go because, you know, with laptops, we're used to having space here for our, our palm, the palm rest, as well as the touchpad being at the front. Um, I found that, you know, just having something like this, <laughs> this is an extra long one, um, but they do have smaller ones or shorter ones on Amazon that you can purchase and it makes the typing experience a lot better. All right, so how is the gamepad? How is the controller? So this takes a little bit of getting used to. You have the joysticks tucked in to make sure that the screen can fall flat. Um, that does take a little bit of getting used to because you'll be hitting the lip here. Um, but really it only takes a few minutes to kind of get used to it. D-pad is really nice. They're all separated. You have this uh, switch here to toggle between mouse for the right joystick and then back to gamepad mode. Um, you have your select menu and start buttons. Um, I was kind of hoping the select button will be here. Just because, you know, that's how it is on um, normal controllers. The face buttons are tiny, about the size of a Nintendo Switch, I think. So that also takes some getting used to. And then the triggers. And then for the back here, we have the bumpers. They're clicky, but very little travel. And then you have the triggers, and there's very little resistance to them but they bounce back into position and in terms of the overall experience of using it as a as a game controller um, really the most annoying part is right here because there's um, it's just flat and it doesn't conform to you know your palm so that takes a little bit of getting used to plus there's these two buttons here that are customizable and I may put grip tapes here just to prevent um, me from pressing these accidentally. Hopefully you can see the frame rates there on the top uh, right. 54, 52, 50 and there is vibration on this device by the way you can set that in terms of the strength as well and this is very usable you know you can, that's the trigger and you can see the game is playable so I'm doing two things I'm showing you the controls or the controller and showing you just how capable this device is when it comes to gaming And the next part of the video is I will be using a PS5 controller just so I'm not shaking the screen. But to sort of cap this part of the video, but as you can see, it works really well and it's highly playable. All right, we have Spider-Man. And just to show the settings for our graphics here we are we're running at at 1600p but we do have FSR 2.1 on at performance so it should um, downscale it and give us some nice frame rates so the preset is also set to low and let's start a new game All right. 
right, as you can see, getting about 40 frames per second. And gameplay is really smooth. And this is what I meant earlier by the game's pop with this 16 to 9 aspect ratio. There's just a higher format in terms of the, the vertical um, space. And it makes the games look really nice. Those hitches are actually part of the game. Alright, hopefully you got to see that it's very fluid, high 30s to low 50s sometimes, and the fact that we're running this at 1600p, even though it's running FSR, is also taxing the, the 6800U. So if we do an internal resolution of you know, 800p, it'll actually increase the frame rate and I'll show that in the next game. All right, our next game is God of War. And just to show you the settings real quick, I'm run I'm rendering this at 1280 by 800 and that is being um, blown up into a 2560 by 1600 resolution for the screen. And we're doing that through AMD FSR 2.0 and top right will show the frame rate. All right. If you can't see, I'll read it. It says 40 frames per second. It goes down to the 30s. And as you can see, it looks really nice. Graphics, it's crisp. So it's half resolution from 1600p to 800p and completely playable. Yeah, the frame rates fluctuate from 30 to low 40s and we can actually push this game even higher by running the system resolution at, at 800p and it'll render down to half of that which is 640 by 400 and a quick way to do that is by using another segue here and using this uh, software called Power Control Pro uh, Panel, and I already have it installed. All right, so this is the Power Control Panel. It's just a collection of all the things that you can do in terms of, you know, just changing your TDP, your resolution, um, GPU clock, your volume, brightness. So it's a little bit of an all-in-one collection to change all of that. Um, that is the uh, recommended overlay for this device. It's not even made by GDP, it's created by a third party person. Um, in terms of what you can do with this, it's, you know, it's a quick overlay to change settings. Um, everything works well except for this one. So right now I'm on 2560 by 1600 but this one still says 1280 by 800 it's just a quick uh, it's just a small glitch um, so what i want to do is change it to this resolution but it won't do anything because it's already it thinks it's already on it so what i normally would do is just set it to 720p and then press down it'll change it to um, 1280 by 800 and the glitch is this if I change it back to any of these resolution, like this one, 1600p, see, it's it changed it, but it's still saying uh, 800p, but it's actually correct in terms of the, the actual resolution, but it's incorrect in terms of what it says here. So 
going back I'm going to change it to 800p and it changes system wide so the game also adapts to that so if I go to settings display right there it'll say 1280 by 800 and then our render resolution is half that at 640 by 400 and top right you can see the frame rate counter became larger because the resolution became smaller and as you can see we're now hitting even 60 frames per second a lot smoother um, graphics still looks good but it, it is noticeably less um, or lower resolution um, as you can see that's a nice way to trick the system into lowering the, the resolution using that over overlay all right so there is a shortcut for the power control panel overlay but you have to sort of memorize them so left bumper right bumper and the down uh, key or the down arrow pops up the keyboard on screen keyboard right there and it also turns it off left bumper right bumper and then the right arrow opens our overlay all right so let me show you something on the power control panel software real quick if you go to the home page and or you go to the settings you scroll down this is our controller shortcuts so you have quick access menu set to left bumper right bumper and uh, right arrow on the d-pad on screen keyboard left bumper right bumper d-pad down um, and I wouldn't change these but what you can do is because when I tried changing that it just quits the app um, go to wind controls which is uh, installed by default on your GPD WinMax 2 and right here it says back button customization you can set each of these key to follow these the left bumper right bumper d-pad right for the left key which launches the um, the quick access menu and then on-screen keyboard for the right key so left bumper right bumper and down and the way you would change these is you would just press the button click it and then just press the button make sure you save and then that is how I set the back button as the actual shortcuts for these so I would press the left one and it would pop up the quick access menu so you can change the TDP on the fly um, but just be careful that you're not accidentally clicking these so they're right here and then the right one for the on-screen keyboard out of all the on-screen keyboards that I've used though this one I would say is the worst because it doesn't use or you don't change it per key it doesn't hover per key you're actually using the joysticks to move these bullets around kind of like a laser pointer and then you use the bumper to press each key so the right bumper presses it for the right joystick and then the left bumper presses it for the left joystick um, in theory it should work in practice it's a mess but you do have that option all right we have gotham knights running and fairly decent frame rates here 32 Outdoors, we get about the same as consoles, 30 frames per second. This is running FSR and uh, performance, and again, the resolution is 1600p, so it, it's cutting it down to 1280 by 800. All right, we have Elden Ring 
it is running at 1280 by 800 on high settings let's check it out looks nice and as you can see we're over 40 frames I can probably set the uh, graphic settings to medium and get some nicer frame rates here all right I reloaded on medium and as you can see we are now hitting about 60 still looks very nice and there you go Elden Ring 60 frames per second on medium settings and you, you can probably play around with the settings or even run it at native uh, resolution and then I'm not sure if this game supports FSR though so it's probably just better running it at 1280 by 800 all right we got black ops cold war and just wanted to see how well it would do with for some competitive shooters as you can see we're getting about over 100 frames per second here No. As you can see, it's running it really well. I'm getting an average of well, close to a hundred. Ouch! I didn't see that guy. and yeah it's highly playable I'm actually really surprised but then again the AOK Zoe A1 run this really well too it's the same chip ouch all right my turn Bye bye. Three for three. Oh no, I lost connection. Why? Let's run 3D Mark and let's see what kind of scores we get on Night Raid, Fire Strike, and Time Spy. Here are our scores on Night Raid. Here are <coughs> here's our Fire Strike score. And there's our Time Spy score. Alright, so that's it for the GPD WinMax 2. And as you've seen, it's a very capable device. It's a really well-built device as well. You have edge-to-edge -edge glass, you know, surround sound speakers that can get loud. The implementation of the controller, it works. Um, and I'd say it's really best for, you know, single-player games, adventure games, like and uh, RPGs, things like that. 
um, but for competitive shooters you're still better off just playing on you know a, a real controller um, but it works make sure you hit that subscribe button because I will be pitting this device against the ALK Zoe A1 to see which one is the right 6800U device for you. Thanks for watching and see ya.